Black Lives Matter. It kind of goes without saying, right? You've no doubt seen endless amounts of people doing this, what you see right here on the screen, changing their company logo, their social media profiles, and basically anything else that they can to simply a black screen or logo. Why? Because black lives matter. Now, thankfully, as I look through the thousands upon thousands of people discussing this on my social media, everybody seems to be in agreement that yes, black lives matter. The problem, however, lies with the individuals that respond with remarks such as, well, surely all lives matter, right? This then ends up with lots of typical social media shouting at each other, both sides lose, people get blocked, and new enemies are made. Which is a strange way of dealing with the problem. Because, again, as I'm sure we all agree, of course, black lives matter. For me, the problem I see when people respond with remarks such as these is that they are looking at Black Lives Matter as some kind of competition when it's not. Black Lives Matter is the world's way of saying that enough is enough. We want equality. And although you may think that by typing, well, surely all lives matter, right, is equality, sadly, recent events, among countless others, have proven that even though we may all strive for equality, that's not the way things are. And that's why you see these black avatars all over social media. This is more than a simple, you know, let me join in too. The world needs to understand that black lives matter. I, Daniel Ibbotson, want you to know that I stand united with the black community and that I want to be part of the solution. I am a YouTuber, I've got a voice, and I've got an audience that simply refuses to sit back and do nothing. So to combat this, this very video is not monetized. If you want to support the cause, then the only links that you will find down in the description are ones that will help bring the equality that we all strive for by hopefully ending racism and discrimination in the future. Because currently, even if you rightfully treat people the same, regardless of their race, sex, age, or whatever else, there are others out there that simply do not. On this channel, I look at the history of video games. I talk about the greats such as Yu Suzuki, Shigeru Miyamoto, Gabe Newell, Yuji Naka, Nolan Bushnell, Jordan Mechner, Toru Iwatani, Dave Perry, Yuzo Koshiro, and endless amounts more. When you look at the history of gaming, sadly, there are very few stories based around black people. The majority, if not all, of the names I just rattled off will probably sound very familiar to you, and they should. However, today, I plan to tell you the story of Jerry Lawson, one of the most important men in all of gaming, yet somebody you've probably never heard of. Why? Well, I can't answer that. It's actually a crying shame, and besides this being an you know, interesting gaming history piece, for me, the most important part of this story is to remind us that black lives matter. This is the story of Jerry Lawson. Welcome to Slope's Game Room. When people look at the history of gaming, their minds tend to fall back to around about the Nintendo Entertainment System era, the NES, or the NES if you want to wind up the Americans. Obviously this is you know, not the case, as you probably already know, its release in the States actually came after the video game crash of 1983, heavily bought on during the life of the Atari 2600, where sadly it was very much a case of quantity over quality. But even the Atari 2600 was part of the second generation of consoles. Yep, when looking at the history of gaming, you actually need to go back to crap like Pong. Now when I say crap, I don't actually mean that Pong is crap, of course it's not. It's one of the most important video games ever made. Nope, when I say crap, I'm talking about everything that came off the back of this game. You're watching the most exciting game you will ever see on your TV set. 
Pong clone after Pong clone after Pong clone. Video game systems that did nothing more than simply allow you to play Pong. Sure, it may have been called tennis on this system and hockey on this one, but let's not kid ourselves. It's just Pong. Some systems are worth quite a bit nowadays to collectors, whilst others will end up costing you more in postage than anything else, even though they may be rarer. And even though that's obviously not everything that was released during the first generation of home console gaming, sadly it was the vast majority, which is why most people don't bother going back to it when talking about the history of gaming. Enter Gerald A. Lawson, known to his friends as Jerry, a self-taught engineer who was working in the sales division as an application engineer at Fairchild Semiconductor in San Francisco, a company whose main purpose was the manufacturing of transistors and integrated circuits. Somebody who even at the young age of 13 understood the hustle, earning pocket money by fixing up old broken TVs, building radios and even making and shifting homemade walkie-talkies. He came from a loving family and a good school thanks to his overcautious mother, who would reportedly interview teachers and principals before letting him attend said schools, and would never stop encouraging him to pursue his love for science and technology along with his influential father, who also had a keen interest in science. In his first grade, he would sit at his desk with a photo of George Washington Carver on the wall next to him, who was a black agricultural scientist and inventor, nicknamed as the Black Leonardo in his later years. He was a leader in promoting environmentalism and was a highly respected black scientist in the early part of the 20th century, that not only helped the lives of many farmers all over America and eventually the world, but in relation to this story, he was an inspiring figure to young Jerry. This drive and inspiration would not only lead him to the aforementioned position at Fairchild, but as time went on, the creation of his very own arcade game, Demolition Derby, which he created on his own in his garage. The game itself came about after the company's creation of the F8 microprocessor chip. When Joey got his hand on this chip, he knew he could use it to turn it into a game, and that's exactly what he did. He was inspired by his friends Nolan Bushnell and Ted Dabney, <laughs> yes, aka the inventors of Pong, and his history of gaming goes back even further with his first ever experience of gaming being Nolan's early game, Computer Space. It's important to note that Jerry was not only playing these games, but he was rubbing shoulders with the greats, getting to know not only the games, but also the creators, offering up advice during the creation of arcade gaming as a whole. I was there when two gentlemen showed up. We used to have a computer club that was in Stanford Linear Accelerator Auditorium once a month, and there were two guys that used to come there all the time with their little toys. One guy was named Steve Jobs, and the other guy was named Steve Wozniak. <laughs> that was taken from an interview with Vintage Gaming, and the funny conclusion to this story was that by this point, 1973 or 1974, Jerry had already worked himself up the ladder at Fairchild, and Steve Wozniak had applied for a job at the company as an engineer. But Jerry wasn't impressed and turned him down. Anyway... It was the creation of that demolition derby game that ruffled a few feathers at Fairchild. He was quickly promoted to chief engineer of a new game division for the company, simply because they wanted Jerry to do the same for them. He was given a small budget, a marketing guy, and eventually a team that he hired without the boss man knowing about it, claiming that they had worked there all along, and got to work on Fairchild's first console, the Fairchild Channel F. If the name Jerry Lawson didn't ring any bells for you as a video game history buff, there is still a chance that this system will do. It was the first ever home console with ROM-based cartridges. Now, you know, to be fair, Jerry Lawson wasn't wholly responsible for the creation or the idea of these cartridges. You know, I better add that in before somebody in the comments does it for me. Regardless, he was a key player in bringing this cartridge-based system to life, which just so happens to be the first game of the second generation of home console gaming. No longer would you buy a whole console to play a variation of Pong, 
now you have unlimited possibilities of what your new system can do. And by unlimited possibilities, I actually mean 26. <laughs> okay, okay. The number is actually quite a lot higher than that, as a good amount of the 26 cartridges that came out available for this system had multiple games included on them. And the only reason that it stopped at 26 was because of the Atari 2600. First the Pac-Man eats through a maze of dots, then the Pac-Man heads for the corner spot, then he eats his fill of a power pill. And then all those ghosts turn blue, boo, and Pac-Man eats them all too. Have you played Pac-Man? It's the new video computer game everyone's talking about. And naturally, it's from Atari. Have you played Atari today? There was simply no competing with that bad boy, and by 1983, the Fairchild Channel F and its many repackagings around the world had ceased production. But still, as basic, as limited, and as overshadowed as this system was, there was no denying its rightful place in history. This was the first ever cartridge-based system, and no other system can ever take that away from it. Jerry's life would continue on within the world of gaming for many years to come, but no matter what he did in his past or his present, even releasing software for the Atari 2600, it seems that for whatever reason, his history and importance was slowly being forgotten. That was until Benj Edwards came along. If everything leading up to this point may sound familiar to you already, then it was likely because of this gentleman right here, Benj Edwards. The story goes that Benj, a fellow gaming and technology nut, had received a large collection of vintage computer magazines, and whilst he flicked away night after night to his little nerdy heart's content, he came across the story of Jerry Lawson and was stunned. Not only because this story was completely unknown by practically everyone, but also because Jerry Lawson was a black man. And after reading hundreds of retro computing publications, it suddenly dawned on him that this was probably the first black man that he had come across in this field. He went searching online to try and find this individual for an interview and every lead went dry. It seemed that Benji's attempt to tell the full story of Jerry Lawson simply just wasn't gonna happen. Fast forward a few months later, and I'm standing on the showroom floor of Vintage Computer Festival 9.0. As I spend a few minutes fumbling through a vendor's large array of cartridges for sale, I hear a voice from behind. Do you have any video soft cartridges? Color bar generator? I turned around and noticed a large black man in a wheelchair, hair graying at the edges. He seems out of place. I scan the crowd. Yep, he's the only black guy here. Fascinating. What's his story? Instead of bumbling through a few impromptu questions and making a fool out of myself, I decide to research his identity first. As it turns out, the man I encountered that day was Gerald A. Lawson, aka Jerry, co-creator of the world's first cartridge-based video game system, the Fairchild Channel F. After this realisation that he had finally discovered the video game pioneer that was Jerry Lawson, a very in-depth interview detailing a lot of what was said in this video and basically every other video or article mentioning this icon was undertaken, and although sadly Jerry did die in 2011, his legacy has now thankfully continued on because of that article focused on Jerry and the endless amounts of videos documenting the history of the Channel F. And thank God they did. In more recent years since Jerry's death, he has won awards as an industry pioneer for his work on the game cartridge concept by the International Game Developers Association, as well as being honored with the ID at Xbox Gaming Heroes Award for the same reason. And now I have done my little bit too. I think it goes without saying that Jerry Lawson was an incredible man, someone that truly does deserve to stand among the video game greats that we constantly hear about. And hopefully this video has showcased that even in the early days of gaming that was almost completely dominated by white people, that of course, black lives matter. 